Diabetic foot complications are a group of health issues that can arise due to diabetes affecting the feet. Diabetes can cause nerve damage, neuropathy, and poor circulation, which can lead to various problems with the feet. Some common diabetic foot complications include 1. Peripheral neuropathy. Diabetes can damage nerves in the feet, leading to numbness, tingling, or loss of sensation. This can make it difficult to detect injuries or infections. 2. Foot ulcers. Due to reduced sensation and poor circulation, minor injuries or pressure points on the feet can develop into ulcers, open sores. These ulcers are slow to heal and can become infected if not properly treated. Month 3. Charco foot. This condition involves the weakening of the bones in the foot, leading to fractures and joint dislocations. It can result in deformity and instability of the foot. 4. Peripheral vascular disease, PVD. Diabetes can cause narrowing or hardening of the arteries in the legs and feet, leading to reduced blood flow. Poor circulation can slow wound healing and increase the risk of infection. 5. Gangrene. Severe cases of poor circulation and untreated infections can result in tissue death, gangrene, which may require amputation of the affected toe, foot, or lower leg. 6. Calluses and corns. Diabetes can cause abnormal pressure points on the feet due to changes in gait or foot structure. These pressure points can lead to the formation of calluses or corns, which can become ulcerated if not properly managed. Preventing diabetic foot complications involves maintaining good blood sugar control, regularly inspecting the feet for any signs of injury or infection, wearing appropriate footwear, practicing proper foot hygiene, and seeking prompt medical attention for any foot problems. It's also crucial for people with diabetes to have regular foot exams by a healthcare professional to identify and address any issues early on. Peripheral neuropathy caused by diabetes is often challenging to cure completely, but its progression can be slowed, symptoms managed, and complications prevented through various treatment approaches. Here are some strategies commonly used. 1. Blood sugar control. Maintaining stable blood sugar levels within the target range can help prevent or delay the progression of neuropathy and reduce symptoms. 2. Medications. Certain medications may help alleviate symptoms of neuropathy, such as pain, tingling, or burning sensations. These may include anticonvulsants, antidepressants, and medications specifically designed to treat nerve pain. 3. Physical therapy. Physical therapy can help improve muscle strength, flexibility, and coordination, which may alleviate symptoms and improve overall function. 4. Transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, TENS. TENS therapy involves applying mild electrical currents to the skin, which can help reduce pain signals transmitted by damaged nerves. 5. Topical treatments. Creams, gels, or patches containing medications such as capsaicin or lidocaine may provide temporary relief from neuropathic pain. 6. Lifestyle modifications. Quitting smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, and incorporating regular exercise into your routine can help improve circulation and reduce symptoms of neuropathy. 7. Foot care. Proper foot care is essential for preventing complications such as ulcers and infections. This includes inspecting the feet daily, keeping the feet clean and dry, wearing comfortable shoes that fit well, and avoiding walking barefoot. 8. Nutritional supplements. Some supplements, such as alpha-lipoic acid and vitamin B12, may have neuroprotective effects and could, could potentially help manage symptoms of neuropathy. However, it's essential to consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new supplements. While these treatments can help manage symptoms and prevent complications, it's important to note that nerve damage caused by diabetes may not be fully reversible. Therefore, the focus is often on slowing the progression of neuropathy, relieving symptoms, and maintaining overall foot health to prevent further damage. Regular monitoring and follow-up with a healthcare provider are crucial for managing diabetic peripheral neuropathy effectively. Curing foot ulcers in individuals with diabetes involves a multifaceted approach aimed at promoting wound healing, preventing infection, and addressing underlying factors contributing to ulcer formation. Here are key components of ulcer management. 1. Wound care. Proper wound care is essential for promoting healing and preventing infection. This includes cleaning the ulcer with mild soap and water, 
removing dead tissue, debridement, and covering the wound with appropriate dressings. Two, offloading pressure. Offloading pressure from the ulcer site helps relieve pressure on the affected area, allowing the wound to heal. This may involve using specialized footwear, orthotic devices, or total contact casts to redistribute pressure away from the ulcer. Three, infection control. Diabetic foot ulcers are prone to infection, which can impede healing and lead to serious complications. Antibiotics may be prescribed if there are signs of infection, and regular monitoring of the ulcer for signs of worsening infection is crucial. Four, optimizing blood sugar control. Elevated blood sugar levels can impair wound healing and increase the risk of infection. Maintaining stable blood sugar levels within the target range is essential for promoting healing and preventing complications. Five, nutrition. Adequate nutrition is vital for wound healing. A balanced diet rich in protein, vitamins, and minerals supports tissue repair and regeneration. In some cases, nutritional supplements may be recommended to ensure optimal healing. Six, vascular assessment. Poor circulation can hinder wound healing in individuals with diabetes. Assessing vascular status through tests such as ankle brachial index, ABI, or Doppler ultrasound can help identify any underlying vascular issues that need to be addressed. Seven, foot care education. Teaching individuals with diabetes about proper foot care practices, including daily foot inspections, appropriate footwear selection, and avoiding barefoot walking can help prevent future ulcers. Eight, multidisciplinary care. Managing diabetic foot ulcers often requires a multidisciplinary approach involving healthcare professionals such as podiatrists, wound care specialists, endocrinologists, vascular surgeons, and infectious disease specialists. While diabetic foot ulcers can be challenging to treat, timely and comprehensive management can promote healing, reduce the risk of complications such as infection and amputation, and improve overall foot health in individuals with diabetes. Regular monitoring and follow-up care are essential to track progress and address any issues that may arise during the healing process. Charcot foot, also known as Charcot neuroarthropathy, is a serious complication of diabetes characterized by weakening and destruction of the bones in the foot. While Charcot foot can be challenging to cure completely, treatment aims to stabilize the foot prevent further deformity, and reduce the risk of complications such as fractures and joint dislocations. Here are some approaches commonly used in the management of Charcot foot. One, immobilization. Uh, immobilizing the affected foot using a cast, brace, or removable walking boot helps stabilize the foot and reduce stress on the weakened bones. This immobilization may need to be maintained for several months to allow the bones to heal. Two, offloading pressure. Offloading pressure from the affected foot is crucial for preventing further damage. Specialized footwear, custom orthotic devices, or total contact casts may be used to redistribute pressure away from the affected areas. Three, temperature control. Since charcoal foot is often associated with loss of sensation, individuals with this condition may not feel pain or discomfort even when there is significant damage to the foot. Monitoring foot temperature and avoiding temperature extremes can help prevent further injury. For physical therapy, once the acute phase of Charcot foot has resolved, physical therapy may be recommended to improve strength, flexibility, and balance. Physical therapists can also provide guidance on safe ambulation techniques and exercises to prevent recurrence. Five, orthopedic interventions. In some cases, surgical intervention may be necessary to correct severe deformities or stabilize unstable joints. This may involve procedures such as joint fusion, realignment osteotomy, or the insertion of internal fixation devices. Arbor six, management of underlying conditions. Since Charcot foot is often associated with diabetes and peripheral neuropathy, optimizing blood sugar control and managing neuropathic symptoms are important for preventing further complications. Seven, regular monitoring. Close monitoring of the foot is essential for detecting any signs of recurrence or complications. Regular follow-up appointments with healthcare providers, including podiatrists and orthopedic specialists, are necessary to track progress and adjust treatment as needed. While Charcot foot can be challenging to manage, early diagnosis and comprehensive treatment can help prevent further deformity, 
reduce the risk of complications, and improve overall foot function and quality of life. It's important for individuals with Charcot foot to adhere to their treatment plan and follow up with their healthcare team regularly to ensure sure optimal outcomes. Peripheral vascular disease, PVD, also known as peripheral artery disease, PD, is a condition characterized by narrowing or blockage of the arteries that supply blood to the extremities, most commonly the legs. While PVD cannot be cured completely, its progression can be slowed, symptoms managed, and complications prevented through various treatment approaches. Here are some strategies commonly used in the management of PVD. One, lifestyle modifications. Lifestyle changes are often the first line of treatment for PVD. This includes quitting smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, following a balanced diet low in saturated fats and cholesterol, and engaging in regular exercise to improve circulation and overall cardiovascular health. Two, medications. Several medications may be prescribed to manage symptoms and reduce the risk of complications in individuals with PVD. This may include medications to lower blood pressure, control cholesterol levels, prevent blood clots, and improve blood flow. Three, peripheral angioplasty and stenting. In cases where there is significant blockage in the arteries, minimally invasive procedures, such as angioplasty and stenting, may be performed to open up the blocked arteries and restore blood flow. Four, bypass surgery. For more severe cases of PVD where multiple arteries are blocked, bypass surgery may be necessary. This involves using a graft to reroute blood flow around the blocked arteries, restoring blood supply to the affected limb. Five, exercise therapy. Supervised exercise programs, such as supervised treadmill exercise or structured walking programs, have been shown to improve walking distance and quality of life in individuals with PVD. Six, foot care. Proper foot care is essential for individuals with PVD to prevent complications such as foot ulcers and infections. This includes daily foot inspections, wearing comfortable and supportive footwear, and avoiding injuries to the feet. Seven, wound care. In, in individuals with PVD who develop foot ulcers or wounds, proper wound care is essential to prevent infection and promote healing. This may involve debridement of dead tissue, application of dressings, and offloading pressure from the affected area. Eight, regular monitoring. Regular monitoring of blood pressure, cholesterol levels, and blood sugar in individuals with diabetes is important for managing risk factors and preventing complications associated with PVD. While PVD cannot be cured completely, effective management can help slow its progression, alleviate symptoms, and reduce the risk of complications such as limb ischemia and amputation. Um, it's essential for individuals with PVD to work closely with their healthcare providers to develop a comprehensive treatment plan tailored to their specific needs and circumstances. Gangrene is a serious condition characterized by the death of body tissue due to a lack of blood supply or a bacterial infection. It typically occurs as a complication of an underlying condition such as peripheral artery disease, PIA, diabetes, or trauma. While the affected tissue cannot be revived, treatment focuses on preventing the spread of gangrene removing dead tissue, and addressing the underlying cause. Here are some approaches used in the management of gangrene. One, surgical debridement. Surgical removal of dead or infected tissue debridement is essential for preventing the spread of gangrene and promoting healing. This may involve removing the affected tissue in a procedure called amputation if necessary. Two, antibiotics. If gangrene is caused by a bacterial infection, Antibiotics may be prescribed to control the infection and prevent it from spreading further. Intravenous antibiotics are often used for severe cases of gangrene. Three, revascularization. In cases of gangrene caused by reduced blood supply, ischemic gangrene, revascularization procedures such as angioplasty, stenting, or bypass surgery may be performed to restore blood flow to the affected area and promote tissue healing. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, HBOT, HBOT involves breathing pure oxygen in a pressurized chamber, which can help improve oxygen delivery to the affected tissue, promote wound healing, and reduce the risk of infection. Five, wound care. Proper wound care is essential for preventing infection and promoting healing in individuals with gangrene. This may involve cleaning the wound, applying dressings, and offloading pressure from the affected area. Six, 
Pain management. Gangrene can be associated with significant pain and discomfort. Pain management strategies such as medications, e.g. opioids, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and nerve blocks may be used to alleviate pain and improve quality of life. Seven, adequate nutrition is crucial for supporting tissue healing and recovery. A balanced diet rich in protein, vitamins, and minerals can help promote wound healing and prevent complications. Eight, management of underlying conditions. Addressing underlying conditions such as diabetes or peripheral artery disease is important for preventing recurrence of gangrene and reducing the risk of complications. It's important for individuals with gangrene to receive prompt medical attention and appropriate treatment to prevent further tissue damage and complications. In severe cases, gangrene may necessitate surgical intervention and aggressive medical management to preserve life and limb. Early intervention and comprehensive treatment are key to optimizing outcomes for individuals with gangrene. Calluses and corns are thickened areas of skin that develop in response to repeated friction or pressure. While they can be effectively managed, they may not be completely cured since they tend to reoccur due to continued pressure or friction on the affected area. However, the following approaches can help alleviate symptoms and reduce the frequency of callus and corn formation. 1. Proper footwear. Wearing well-fitting, supportive shoes with adequate room for the toes can help prevent friction and pressure on the feet, reducing the risk of calluses and corns. 2. Foot care. Regularly soaking the feet in warm soapy water and gently exfoliating the skin with a pumice stone or foot file can help reduce the thickness of calluses and corns. It's important to avoid over exfoliating as this can cause irritation and damage to the skin. 3. Padding. Using cushioning pads or orthotic inserts can help redistribute pressure on the feet and provide relief from discomfort caused by calluses and corns. 4. Moisturization. Applying moisturizing creams or lotions to the feet can help soften the skin and reduce the risk of calluses and corns forming. However, it's important to avoid applying moisturizer between the toes as this can increase the risk of fungal infections. 5. Avoidance of irritants. Avoiding activities or footwear that cause friction or pressure on the feet can help prevent the formation of calluses and corns. This may include wearing socks with seams that can rub against the skin or avoiding high heels that put excessive pressure on certain areas of the foot. 6. Medical treatment. In some cases, medical intervention may be necessary to treat persistent or painful calluses and corns. This may involve paring down the thickened skin by a healthcare professional using sterile instruments. Um, they may also recommend topical treatments containing salicylic acid to help soften and remove the callus or corn. Seven, addressing underlying issues. If calluses and corns are caused by underlying foot deformities or biomechanical issues such as bunions or hammer toes, addressing these issues may help reduce pressure on the affected areas and prevent recurrence of calluses and corns. While calluses and corns may not be completely cured, proactive foot care and appropriate treatment can help manage symptoms, reduce discomfort, and prevent complications. It's important to seek medical advice if calluses or corns are causing significant pain, discomfort, or difficulty with mobility.